So as world leaders seek answers to the climate crisis, they could do worse than look to India's southeastern coast. Cutting or even eliminating carbon emissions is seen as key to halting global warming. And scientists are always looking for ways to reduce India's carbon footprint. And they're proposing to do it by farming seaweed. And in our next report, we travel to Rameshwaram, where the Gulf of Manar offers fertile waters for the marine crop. On India's southeastern coast, a road flanked by seaweed beds provides a clue to the natural resource that has been hailed as a marine miracle. Scientists say seaweed absorbs more carbon dioxide than trees, a characteristic that could play a part in fighting the effects of climate change. It absorbs a lot of carbon dioxide available in the seawater and produces, after photosynthesis, the result is producing a lot of oxygen. Scientists hope the macroalgae's oxygen-producing abilities can help reduce the impact of greenhouse gas emissions by reversing ocean acidification. That would be good news for marine organisms sensitive to acidic conditions. And the benefits don't end there. It's also environmentally friendly, a sustainable crop that doesn't require land, fresh water, fertilizer or pesticides. When harvested, seaweed has many uses. As a foodstuff for humans and animals, an ingredient in medicines and cosmetics, and as a biofertilizer and biofuel. Seaweed farming also offers a sustainable source of income for local communities, especially women. I used to think I wouldn't be able to educate my children, but this seaweed business has enabled me to send them to college. There are some dangers, like being stung by jellyfish or injured on the rocks. But the women say the improvement in living standards is worth the risk. They also have to take precautions to avoid over-harvesting, ensuring their seaweed farming remains eco-friendly. So let's talk more about India at COP26. Olga Kelkar directs the climate program for the World Resources Institute India, and she joins us now from Bangalore. A very warm welcome to the show. Um, India is among the world's most populous countries, and it's also among the world's biggest emitters. Can you give us a sense of what we might expect to see from India at COP26? Thank you. India is one of the biggest emitters, but in per person terms, given the size of the population, our carbon footprint is well below the world average. So India is in this very unique position. It has not caused the problem, but its future emissions are growing. And so it has a lot of responsibility to choose a climate friendly path to development rather than ex exacerbate the adverse consequences of its development path. What Indeed. we can expect to hear from India COP26 is really a re-emphasis on its commitment to renewable energy, 450 gigawatts of solar, wind, and hydro that's been planned in just the next nine years, and also a commitment to, uh, to green hydrogen, which is the key to industrial decarbonization in the future. Okay, so it sounds like India is investing in green technologies, but yet India's situation does reflect that of many states at the summit limited financial resources, and also right now, heavy reliance on fossil fuels. What is the way forward for other countries like that? Well, certainly at this COP, a lot of questions are being asked about finance from developed countries to developing countries. Way back in 2009, a goal of $100 billion was chosen, but countries have been struggling to meet that. So definitely that holds the key to what will be seen as the success of this COP. But even outside the COP, there will be a lot of technology partnerships that have been explored in this last year alone on renewable energy, on electric vehicles, on battery storage, and on green hydrogen. So I think it's definitely the right moment if industry can invest and government can provide the right kind of policy signals, especially long-term policy signals of the sort that come out at these global climate summits, then I think we can look forward to a greener market. Of course, leaders' actions at international summits like this one are constrained by domestic politics. Uh, what do you say to the climate and economic policies of the Modi government in India? 
I think uh, there have definitely been constraints because India's energy needs are still unmet. We're a growing economy. We want to lift millions out of poverty. But the fact that almost all of the new electricity capacity development is expected to come from renewable sources is a sign that we're going in the right direction. As far as the existing fossil fuel capacity is concerned, a lot of it is on schedule to be phased out as it becomes non-competitive compared to renewables. What we need, of course, is that in the future, we should not build new coal capacity if it is not required. Because if we do so, we are creating stranded assets. All right. Olka Kelkar of the World Resources Institute India, thank you so much for joining us on the show. Thank you.